It's getting really interesting. Today is the 13th of October 2021. Yes, of homeopathy. His motto is like cures like. It's the law of similarities. What can be twisted, and that's actually the, you could call it the shadow side of Libra, has that ability to twist perception to redress reality. Yesterday, actually, it, it was kind of an interesting um, um, synchronicity. I was guided to look at Aleister Crowley's chart. And then later the day came to me that this was actually his birthday, October 12, 1875. Why do I mention Aleister Crowley? He is the, I would say the, um, how to phrase that right? The founder is not the right word, but the kind of the ideologist behind the cabal. He created this religion which the Ordo, Ordo Templi and um, you name it, uh, the, the, the Theosophic movement, uh, they all work. It was a very, very smart um, way to hide their true intent. I watched this five-hour documentary actually just a few days ago. I should... Um, show you quickly uh, let me just see if i find it here if i have an open link let's go here uh, it's right there on my facebook page actually by the way those of you who are not on facebook you can find me also on telegram just search for celestial rhythms it's my channel name. I'm also posting some other things aside from astrology there, kind of actual events and such. And naturally I'm on Facebook, Celestial Rhythms, if you are not yet um, part of our forum there. That's where I post most of my things, kind of on a day-to-day -day base. I only have once in a while time to do a YouTube, I have a very busy life, I guess, as we all do. Anyway, so just um, let me just quickly play you a few minutes I here. You and it's the most important thing I could ever say to you. In a little while, you'll know for certain that I'm putting my very life on the line and the safety of my family by sharing this with you. So I hope that that buys me at least a few minutes of your precious time. If this video is taken down, it wasn't taken down by me, all right? Now, I'm partly doing this to wash your blood off my hands because God saved my life on a midnight highway one fateful night for this very cause. And he's... 
Well, he gives a testimony and he backs it up with lots and lots of information um, um, and um, sources, source material. He was part of the dark cult. He was a very successful musician. And then at some point he was put into the situation to get initiated to the higher levels and he was not ready to do that he got out of it and took that great risk to speak out in a way nobody has done yet so please if you're interested you will learn a lot it is pretty dark but i'm highly recommending it that's what i posted also on facebook um the other day and also on telegram let me just close here these messages and then i will scroll up to that place let me just reload the page so q mentioned it many times symbolism will be their downfall and that's exactly what this um, young man is revealing now come on um, okay here we go so you see there's lots of interesting posts here always so i have a few friends astrologers who also post regularly it's okay let me see how far down it is Okay, hmm. let's go back to the top. Let's just reload the page and see. It should be very close to the top. Yes, so symbols and they use them all the time they definitely will be the ones which people start scratching their heads this young gentleman shows it very clearly it's just overwhelming the one eye on the lips having one hand in your jacket these guys are really not very um creative <laughs> they always do use the same hand signal so it's it's he shows them hundreds of examples from people you wouldn't even have expected anyway i don't give more away he speaks of all the secret manuals and they are threatened that their life is at serious risk if they share any of that insider wisdom that's how deep it goes so anyway that's um kind of the uh, the gist of that let me see maybe facebook just removed it that's very possible i'm i'm guessing that's very let me just go to um to my telegram channel here yep my computer is not the fastest one so bear with me okay here symbolism will be their downfall yep here's the link again anyway so this made me uh, get onto that track um that the whole system has is based in a twisted perception the media naturally are the main flagship which they are still allowed to steer through reality so to say and if there if we want the normies as cliff high says 
to understand what's going on it has to come out of the same media hmm? pretty obvious the same voices basically who told them all these lies all these deceptive narratives they have to roll back and say no it's the other way or at least we have to use the same platforms to bring it across so in that sense it's an ideal setting this year in 2021 it's just uh, it's just fabulous so on the 19th of october saturn and uranus have their one and only 90 degree angle as seen from heliocentric astronomy geometry this is very important I mentioned in my earlier video too but i have to repeat that it's, it's really a key point of 2021 we have as seen from earth because earth moves a little bit sway on one side of the sun to the other and so perspectives change so from earth's point of view we see three exact angles of 90 degree between saturn and uranus and they were the first, I guess, happened in January and the last one will be in December. So it's really the theme of the year Saturn square Uranus. Here we have it, Saturn in Aquarius and Uranus in um, in Taurus. Now, yes, in geocentric, they are not in, a, in an um, exact square right now, but as seen from the sun, yes, the 19th is the day when it's exact. Um, yeah, I quickly just show you here. Okay, I guess it's here. Okay, here we are. See, I will. I wanted to make uh, another video, but I guess I really don't have the time right now. So I will just say it all in this. It might get a little bit longer, but twelve thirty-five, twelve thirty-five. Yes, that's the most basic aspect of slow planets, and the slow planets are, are really the societal planets, which show the shifts within societies so this is the clash between the old and the new sure there's many many more levels to that this is just a simplification but it sure works saturn is what has to adjust and be remodeled in a way hmm? saturn represents the governments the authorities and uranus is challenging it hmm? uranus from taurus here uranus and taurus very um powerfully placed that's where the uranian ideas become real where they take shape nikola tesla for example is one with um, uranus in um, Taurus and he has Pluto there too so that's even more strong but yes Uranus and Taurus so that's why also between 2018 and 2025 I said that quite a few times this is the window we will see free energy devices getting real uh, um, so yeah we still have a few years to get that all out into the public so interesting here the dynamic is that saturn is as we say in astrology disposed by uranus as uranus is the planet ruling the sign of aquarius so in a way this is a home play for uranus and saturn has to adjust to this other guy's territory um is kind of in that way um a bit more handicapped you could say so uranus is has a stronger position here which is a good thing because we are in that phase of remodeling the whole society 
and if we look closely yes there are it's a bifurcation the one side wants to lead us into the reset the great reset and the other side wants to lead us towards the great awakening hmm? which is either way it will be a totally a total reformatting of of, of reality of, of our society either in a, a more tyrannical very restricted constricted way in the example of uh, china of social credits and all where every move of yours is uh, surveilled and and you are you're losing your identity by these um, uh, things we have to bear in front of our face a very uh, psychologically um Yeah, it's a, it, it, there is there is definitely some some method behind all that. Uh, that's I leave it at that. Yes, taking our individuality away, turning us into robots, and the same with the injections, which um, as many have reported, are kind of infesting infesting us humans with nanoparticles with. Um, with graph graphene and other things which make us on one side um, limit our perception to higher dimensions kind of cut that off disable our receiver system for those higher frequencies and on the other side ma making us making us susceptible to to the 5g and um, all the artificial frequencies which are around and which actually are pretty intentionally focused on whole populations to um, make them think and feel in a certain way there's tons of patterns if you do your research the um your your um, tv set on the on the wall probably be one of the most um used gadget as well as naturally these little phones we all have uh, which we are constantly using where we become manipulated in that sense so that's the dark side of that um aquarian age if you want so we have this choice and it's definitely the year of choice the, the year of the confrontation between the old and the new and this comes to a pinnacle as is as these two planets are in that exact 90 degree angle there's four, four major stations in every cycle it's the moon is a perfect example we have new moon and we have the waxing half moon and then we have the full moon and the waning half moon so this is the waning half moon phase of Saturn and Uranus it's the last of their phase in their roughly 40 year cycle So this is big, this is powerful, and this is the uh, kind of gives you the the background. But there's many, many more things playing in here. So the fact alone that Mercury is turning um, direct on the 18th, just on the fourth night of that Saturn Uranus heliocentric alignment and heliocentric again that's the energetic background that's the codes all the photons carry which are coming from the sun and you know it's only if the sun would turn off within eight minutes it would be totally dark here on earth every one all life would vanish within six to ten hours it would get so everything would just um, freeze to death so that's how directly connected we are with the sun 
we constantly breathe and live off those photons which are streaming in and they carry that frequency of the heliocentric geometry that's their coding their quantum information so to say so okay so this is now the heliocentric saturn uranus square that moment when that is exact translated to the location of phoenix in arizona and here we have saturn and if we just go back here here we have jupiter this in itself is very special and earmarks phoenix arizona to be a very special place and i guess you already <laughs> kind of know where i'm going with all this yes it's about the um elections hmm? and that we are coming to that crucial moment when some big announcement will come out of that place of on our planet out of phoenix arizona leading most likely up to the decertification of that state's votes electoral votes and if in one state it's proven that something was not according to how it should have been then the whole elections will be void and nil hmm? so you get it hmm? that's the turning point that's where we are going and it has to happen within this time before the sun and mercury and mars naturally all move on to scorpio the sun will enter scorpio on the 23rd of october mercury a little later and mars i guess on the 30th of october and mercury be because it has been going retrograde it will take a few weeks to catch up momentum however i'm expecting the big announcements or the big whatever release of of, of data information which will in, initiate that change to happen between the 19th and the 23rd of october in phoenix and now i have a whole bunch of charts and i am um, will quickly run through them i'm having here some notes that i'm hopefully not missing the most important um aspects and not settings so let's and now um just bear with me i know there's quite a few charts out there for the american nation and all of you who kind of um, think this is not the one I would use, just bear with me, stay with me for a while. I will show you some just unbelievable resonance events, I would call it synchronicities, which are one in a billion, I would say. So this chart, there might be other ones who are also powerful and and working quite well but this one in my opinion is the best of them all and as i say i will show you why and so this is the this chart has been um, actually used by dane rudiar probably the most eloquent and wonderful astrologer very creative of the 20th century he was born 1995 and lived i guess until 1973 something like that he was a master astrologer and he really revived astrology in many ways 
pretty much all the famous astrologers of, 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 of today's age have been studying if not directly with Dane Rudyard but reading all his books and they are amazing so anyway this is the background this is the chart I'm using and now we relocate this chart to Phoenix Arizona okay just to start I want to say that's where Jupiter is right now in the 22nd degree 23rd degree of Aquarius hmm? so if we, we use this chart for America then in Phoenix Jupiter is as the source point speaking of that this will be the place where change is coming and Jupiter is planet number five Mercury Venus Earth Mars Jupiter Jupiter is the representation of that energy of the five which is very fast it's strong G the wind blowing at the top of the mountain we are in the five year don't forget that and also 2021 that's the real deal whatever we were expecting in 2012 that's what this year is about and the na next the reminder the next whatever 10 to 12 weeks we still have in this year will be a roller coaster I guess that's the best way to say it. there will be huge shifts and changes I mean we can feel it already and it's it's just a, um, getting more and more wild and uncharted territories we are getting in more and more okay so let's first have a quick peek at this chart a few more things I want to um, point out the vertex point conjunct Jupiter hmm? nice and Jupiter is down here by transit so vertex is the higher dimensional descendant it's kind of the spiritual focus point if you want hmm? whereas this is our kind of 3d surrounding if you want what we attract what we are having as our counterparts that's what the seventh house really is is what we meet around us that's represented by the seventh house by the seventh house cost most particularly how we interact with that um, surrounding energy with our partners the higher dimensional descendant therefore is how we are relating to the higher dimensional surroundings if you want in a very very, very um, overall way said so Jupiter here this shows that Phoenix kind of is predestined it seems to be that place where the change is occurring also Jariklo here exactly at the fourth house cusp in the American nation at 2235 Aquarius another indication that even just that Jupiter now by transit is stationing here pretty much on Jariklo Jariklo is Chiron's wife Jariklo is holds the energy of a midwife holding sacred space it's the ability to witness devotion discernment presence very spiritual in that way and Chariklo 
will be back in Aquarius uh, actually by transits let me just go here to the transits for a minute um, that is I guess no okay yeah that is actually this this is then the lunar return we will have on the 15th of October but that's just quickly showing you here where um, Chariklo is right now here at 29.30 in Capricorn and by November 9 Chariklo will move into Aquarius for a few years. Chariklo is in Aquarius then really giving birth to that Aquarian age and it seems the American nation is predestined to hold that energy as they have natally this center planet of giving birth to something new and of caring and and uh, you uh, applying higher values very um much that feminine quality of the heart then Furthermore, interesting here is um, part of fortune here at zero degrees Cancer. As we have Cancer Sun here, Cancer Jupiter, Cancer Venus, Cancer Mercury. Cancer is a very, very important sign for the American nation. Cancer is cardinal. Cardinal means it's a leading energy and it's the the sign of the moon caring and also deeply emotional moody at first but i mean that's just part of um, not having mastered one's emotions yet in that sense mastered of not being um uh, pulled into them but being able to just watch um, one's emotion and give an expression in a by choice I would say express what we are comfortable with be conscious about it that's the whole thing so cancer is a very powerful force which shows the patriotism and the love for the country many many people feel and actually this chart really is more than just the birth of the American nation America was meant to spearhead to trailblaze into uh, this new area this country's forefathers had a great vision there's nothing as pure as the American Constitution hmm? so it came out of a, of a very elevated state of spirit so yes we have gone uh, deep into the dark we have been um, kind of hijacked as I said earlier and we are just waking up out of that and this is the American nation thanks to all you guys um, I'm a Canadian I'm feeling with you we all do all through the planet so this is really the chart of the when the cornerstone was planted for this whole new earth we are navigating into now so this is the base chart here and let's now zoom through and I show you a few things I did um, here pile together a few charts so this one is the secondary progressions for phoenix of that same chart we get back to that later just one thing i want to point out the moon by progression 
and this is calculated for the 23rd of October for the day when the Sun will enter Scorpio which is kind of bring the whole thing into deeper waters so the moon is here at uh, in the 13th 14th degree of Aquarius squaring transit Uranus again just quickly here showing you this is where transit Uranus is on the 15th so there is this um, Uranian um, square and to the moon this is not very comfortable this is um, stressful I guess that's the way we all feel it's a very stressful time okay so now this is the lunar return the moon at 27 12 Aquarius if we go back here quickly you see 27 12 Aquarius avoid of course moon by the way just maybe two words no uh, point of course is um, kind of a wild card energy you never exactly know what's coming next uh, you don't you are not in the driver's seat when there's what of course energy in a birth chart this can be um, a little bit um, yeah hard to navigate it uh, the best way to go is in a in a being in a deep let go and allow gu a life to guide you if you have that kind of energy very spiritual very much l l right brain hmm? do i say that right hmm? yeah i guess so very intuitive but yes you get the picture so this is again um, an interesting aspect of the american psyche particularly with cancer being such an important sign so that moon in aquarius here with palace is the dispositor of all that in aquarius palace is all the great new inventions the all the wonderful ideas um, which go into the unknown the where no man has gone before kind of thing the whole science fiction hollywood new um ways of of spinning further uh, just think of all the music jazz well, and then um, all the influences uh, which were really bringing a whole new flavor to art and life in general very very uranian here i like that a lot and again in the fourth house so this is very important Also here naturally is Quawar. Quawar is original thought. Something nobody has been thinking about yet comes in here too, together with Palace, who is all about art and science and the higher expressions of mind, the creative mind of not staying confined within the f the, the the fractal but um ex ex expanding from it into new directions forking out and seeing then the similarities and and everywhere so um yeah very aquarian so um yes the, the lunar return okay for phoenix and um I guess you you s start getting it uh, what i'm here trying to point out there's so many amazing um synchronicities here saturn rising varuna at the seventh house cusp we have this opposition saturn varuna this has been on for the last last couple years it's now getting out of um 
focus so it's in the release phase now we have worked through the phase of nailing it down which tells me yes the all the the um, cases are complete all the evidence is piled ready to be exposed to be officially released and that's what it exactly is varuna is the north star the gold standard of justice it's this celestial body has been named after a pre-vedic creator god who protects rights and life in general very righteous strong principled unwavering ethical is the punisher of those who lie and do not honor contracts hmm? and there's saturn the one who's executing the orders from varuna it will be that we will see arrests i guess everybody knows that no surprise here so that's coming hmm? doesn't mean that it's happening on the 15th of october this is a starting point of a four-week period hmm? keep that in mind the american moon had already two conjunctions with jupiter this year which kind of is a a contradiction you might think hmm? as this was definitely not a very bright year so far for america however it is always with these conjunctions with planets who move slow so jupiter had its first conjunction i guess that was kind of in the early parts of the year then moving back over the moon somewhere in august and now having turned direct it will come back and have its third and final conjunction with that lunar position i guess in december or something or maybe earlier but the third is always the most important now i'm curious myself let me just quickly look it up then we have here a very clear picture which day it will be yeah it will be in december on december 12 13 around so yeah that will be the the time when we really start seeing the the positive outcome hmm? before that we are still in that cocoon of everything is shifting and changing and it's very dynamic with the moon so just want to say the midpoint here of these two is squaring the mid heaven midnight axis if we do that here quickly 49 uh, 20 uh, 32 that would be uh, half point is 24 um 46 something like that yes very close interesting also that um President Trump's mid-heaven, mid-night point is exactly the opposite of this axis, hmm? 24 Taurus, President Trump has in mid-heaven, it's kind of a little hint here from the background, and then i show you just the second chart, this is now something i first have to explain you a little bit about because this is a new technique i'm applying actually it's not fully new it goes back to ronald davison an english astrologer and the technique is very simple that it allows you to see the relationship of two separate entities likely most um, used is between um, two two partners two people or a person with a 
a country or something like that most often we just do that however i started using it in my personal um, learning of astrology studying my own transits and patterns that i started during the midpoints between my birth chart and the transits and this was just amazing it showed uh, it shows a whole new dimension it's the midpoint the hinge where if we if we allow to just be in a let go this midpoint is showing you the balance point so if you understand the balance point it's it's easy to be in a let go because then you know where is the point of least resistance how do i go along with it and that's always um, what i see the greatest benefit in any astrological consultation is that you learn to accept what already is and give uh, and see the silver lining in it and see that everything has its beauty its meaning its place in life the universe is always supporting us even though sometimes we might not see that astrology is the one most wonderful way of seeing that how everything is in perfect balance at all times even if it's not appearing so so this is now the midpoint between the american people's chart and the transits and this is roughly around the 15th of october 2021 and what i'm charting here is in that midpoint there's a perfect venus mars opposition okay venus mars opposition is creation at its most imminent it's when mars and venus are exactly opposed they are vibrating with one another generating a new version of something hmm, of whatever a new version of reality in the american society if you want the rebirth of sort so this naturally um, happens not that often midpoints move half as fast naturally as um, a transit chart so venus mars oppositions usually have probably uh, every six years here if we look at it that way or four years something like that <coughs> anyway okay let me now show you just i ju uh, just wanted to say this yeah this is kind of remarkable and have many more of these things uh, if you're still uh, hanging in there uh, watching sorry it's a little longer this time but it's probably the last um, recording I'm doing in a, in a while probably for a few weeks I'm extremely busy with other things to earn a living too <laughs> and this I all do for free I don't even want to get something out of it at this point to me it's about education and giving my enthusiasm about astrology and sharing that and um, eventually I want to be more in the public with it and be teaching that's my goal and um, hopefully when we are in better times i will i plan to do every day about five to ten minutes about the present energy that's kind of my plan and um, this will happen at some point anyway so okay this is the midpoint between that lunar return of august october 15 with the american chart the 
see the moon here is at 2227 in Leo. This is a uh, powerful degree. I don't think I have really mentioned much about that yet, that 22nd degree of um, Aquarius. But you see, that's where we have the midheaven and the midnight point here in the American nation chart relocated for Phoenix. And that's where Jupiter is right now. I said that already. Now we keep seeing these repeating degrees. Let's just uh, put this out. This is a way to understand um, mundane astrology. And again, this is my, I mean, yes, there's other astrologers who say that too. I just have realized we have to look at many charts and then find the repetitive degrees, patterns, how they interlock with each other to make a, a strong prediction. Because it has to be angled in from many levels to manifest. Let me a few say a few more things about this chart in general. The Sun with Mars here in the 2022 degree Libra range. That is where in the American nations chart we have the Juno Chiron opposition, which is in my opinion what we are most experiencing right now in this present time of healing a split society that's what this exactly shows we have been played out against each other whites against blacks democrats against republicans you name it it's it's a pattern and what we are all coming now is that division that artificial division to see that we are all one we have to work together wax down wax another one yeah there's so many of those so just want to throw in one more thing here is a comet neowise which many of you remember from last year was a very interesting comet it never got really that bright but it had a still a very strong impact on everything and it came from this direction from deep space around the 21st degree of Libra so it m kind of made this really strong and yes this has been <coughs> the making sorry I'm not used to speak that much <laughs> okay so yeah, there's so many things here I still could venture out and, and, and go in different directions. I have to keep focused here, as you know. So anyway, Chiron is here opposed to this Sun-Mars conjunction with Mars healing in action, I would call it, or also the exposure first with Mars. again that 22nd degree of Leo and then here we have the perfect trine with 22 degrees ascendant in Sag hmm. and again I think that's where Mars is and the Sun here now you see the midpoint charts they are around February 1899 that's again the half point between the foundation of the nation and where we are today. So I 
I'm kind of yeah I'm, I'm just zooming through the charts a little bit pointing things out here and there if you like to look at them more in depth just pause the video and or take a, 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 a screenshot and then you can look at them later these are all really powerful charts in by themselves this is then um, in Phoenix again on the 17th of October that's just a, a few days ago away on Sunday when earth will be conjunct Aries so there's so many things happening as I say it's really an accumulation of powerful moments planting pegs in the ground markers milestones and when there's many of them in the same place that means yes we are in very meaningful turning points it's kind of you could say this just comes to mind as i'm trying to think of something if you think of a power line hmm? at the place where the direction changes sharply the line comes from here and now goes this way you need much more anchor points to hold that pull and uh, with from two different directions and anchor it into one point so it seems with what is here happening in a short sequence of a few days between today the 13th and the 20th roughly in this window is we are planting many of these pegs foundations to be an anchor point for a huge shift mm. that's what it feels mercury chiron opposition mercury here close to stationing just one day before in a mystic rectangle with venus and the black moon and ceres okay let's just get there in one sec let me first say uh, this chart has sedna in the heaven hmm? so earth aries first of all aries is the troublemaker who opens the pandora's box and says okay let's see what's all in here let's sort it out let's get to the bottom of the mess Aries doesn't shy away from conflict for the greater good Aries has been the one who took away, away Pluto's planet ship if you want hmm? Pluto has been degraded no more a planet hmm? yes Eris was the one instigating that because Eris was found to be slightly larger than Pluto had we added on Eris as planet number 10 then soon we ha would have 15 planets 20 planets 100 planets because there's not all already now we we know there's so many more uh, little bodies out there and you see a, f a few of them i'm using here in my astrology here in the outer ring these are all newer found objects <coughs> sorry so setna yes the lunar north node black moon and Ceres a nice group here <laughs> yes I'm saying it that way this is um, a very complex group and this is on for uh, the whole um, half year between roughly June and January 2022 they come and go move uh, in and out of uh, of close aspect <coughs> <clears throat> this is disclosure in a nutshell this is dark secrets 
hidden worlds being at the in the direction of of our evolution necessary we have to go through that and then there is the black moon which is all about shadows and 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 then um, and what we do not want to see what's been rather avoided then looked into and Ceres, Ceres the earth goddess is all about nourishment and love caring on a very deep level Ceres representing mother Gaia so all these here up in the 10th house particularly Setna here at the really uh, most exact in, in midheaven shows that yes again phoenix is a special place right now watch out what phoenix will give birth to in a short while and the lunar node just want to point this out in pretty exact t uh, t grand square you uh, you could say here with the ascendant descendant so in this place yes uh, something will be anchored this just a few hours later you see this is in the morning 2 34 a.m in phoenix and 10 30 p.m on the same day in phoenix this is when jupiter is turning direction we already had um, two other big planets change direction in the last two weeks. Pluto right on new moon within half a day or so on the 6th of October and then Saturn on the 10th of October. Ceres turned retrograde and Chariklo turned direct to so there, uh, there's two major plans this is now the third one and naturally then a day later we have mercury so all these planets changing directions that's another way of saying wait something is just getting ready for a big move forward it's still in the early stages but it's um it has it's building momentum that's what my way of seeing october as a full month that was what i said this is the month of building momentum getting more people on board spreading the information what we know being vocal being loud interact share speak don't hide yourself this is not the time to hide this is the time to to fight to stand because this is a war hmm? and we are at that most important phase where it's th th this war is really getting hot in many ways yeah we know it um those of you who um, are not aware i would like also to mention cliff high c l i f h i g h he actually says pretty much the same thing that yes october is a turning point big turning point and he has foreseen that already a few months ago and he actually made me aware that yes let's focus on october and then, then immediately so he's so right yeah he has an amazing um developed an amazing program of analyzing all the content the different words the vocabulary on the internet and has created an algorithm which allows him to see changes in society which always show up first on that level of the way 
things are expressed to then be manifesting a few months down the road or so into real life situations so it's that seeding process which he has kind of discovered a very very intelligent man so this is now the jupiter station for phoenix and again i mean it's it's obvious the moon right at midheaven here in square to the um, galactic center 2708 or 09 so this is very very exact that influence from the galactic center here at the most yang point hmm, the exact square from the midheaven midnight axis which is the plumb line so this is very yang from the sixth house here 27 degrees the influence from the galactic center it's about healing about being bringing a new balance the moon is the people people standing up together demanding things to be rectified still in a very dark place as, as we start this process of in the last line of hexagram 36 darkening of the light if you overlay the 36 hex uh, the 64 hexagrams for those of you who are new to this concept let me just quickly show you here from my website where i have this information available it's my old website i'm no more using it i'm actually not able to update it anymore i used to do it all myself with a program which is no more in use so um yeah this again takes way too long <laughs> anyway here we are and um this is i guess my website and here i am showing you the zodiac with the 64 hexagrams now come on speed up a little bit please no it's not this one then it's probably this one yep must be this one yep okay yep here we go the 64 hexagrams overlaid over the zodiac this is according to the human design system a most amazing combination of different sources of wisdom mostly the, the I Ching and astrology and in this um, synchronization here you see in the that's where the moon is in the last line in the final line of hexagram 36 darkening of the light that's when situations are at a most serious place where when the deception is the greatest so to say and corruption has almost won that very last phase we are in before the turning point at 28 degrees 15 so this is very telling yes we are not yet there um, don't uh, get uh, the, the champagne bottle out of the fridge yet it's still time to be fully alert and do the right thing interesting also that here this is the very close to where the sun is in the american nations chart let's just go back here quickly show you 13 degrees 19 cancer let's move to the next one let's see what's here next okay this is again the midpoint chart between that moment when jupiter turns turns direct and the american nations chart for phoenix chiron pluto hmm? how about that chiron almost exactly in midheaven now again keep in mind this is the ascendant in the original chart for the american nation as for um 
Philadelphia, Pennsylvania. That's where the 13 states met and were coming together, signing this declaration to start this big adventure. Ascendant 13 degrees Satch here very close to the great attractor which is an um, a mesmerizing energy of attraction of I mean everybody on the whole planet wants to go to America that's the big dream and I guess this is in a simple way said um, uh, showing this it's that great attraction mm. Yes, many, many more things could say be said on that. It's I really see the American nation very Sagittarian in many way, in many ways. Everything has always to be bigger and better. <laughs> I guess you get it. So that's um, one um, uh, really uh, a good point why this ascendant makes so much sense. Aside from all these other additional little planets, which now is not the moment to get into, but yeah, there is um, some powerful points here. Just maybe I have some mentioning it already. Pherois and Huya. If anyone is familiar with Reinhold Messner, the first human being who was able to successfully summit all the 8,000 meters plus mountains or whatever that translates into feet, 23,000 feet plus um, mountains was Reinhold Messner with Theorois and Huya in a very similar um, uh, arrangement with his ascendant. So this translates into tremendous determination and strength of going through hardship and difficulties and not lose focus. So if we consider this 13 degrees Satch as an ascendant and now we see here the midpoint between that Jupiter change of direction and what does it mean when a major planet changes direction? It really means that now this energy is expressed outwards again after having retreated for a few months, um, have been more introspective in a way. Now again, we go build momentum towards the outside change in the outside world in a simple way said. So in this midpoint you see we have this transit of Chiron over that 13th degree of uh, um, Sagittarius going on right now and over the next whatever few, few weeks, months, excuse me and Pluto at the 7th house cusp here or at the IC here in this chart. Fundamental shifts and changes. Interesting here also is that this moment of the exact midpoint is an almost full moon. 646 here is the sun, 635 is the moon. So this is a high point as such in the rhythms of time as they're experienced by the American nation. And actually only a little while later, the full moon is exact. So that's now the full moon. You see here we have, um, if we go back a, a step, you see it's really very short before full moon. Here we have an ascendant of two degrees roughly and here we have an ascendant of 10 degrees. Hmm? So this is the full moon then and this would be the 
high point of a two month period again keep in mind everything moves half as fast in the midpoint so we have only every two months we have a full moon hmm. so this is a high point and <laughs> Nessus is rising here in Phoenix Arizona again very very telling Nessus exactly here at the ascendant the focus is on exposing darkness <clears throat> how about that hmm. and let me just just go back here quickly to the natal chart of the American nation and now let's look at the one as for where the whole declaration was signed you see Nessus at nine degrees Pisces is opposed by Orcus at nine degrees Virgo this is in a nutshell Nessus is the dark energies of perversion of pathological behavior which are on one side here celebrated by ritual and all the dark rituals we have been our perception has been twisted by I would like to say we have been blinded into and, and abused and such and Orcus is actually the one which is now regaining its true stature of transmuting of bringing light and healing and shifting so Orcus is very important here actually in that big t-square with uh, Uranus and Pheroes this is one of the most basic structures here in the in this chart again I don't want to go too deep into that right now just want to point out this is very strong this transmuting of dark energy into um, higher frequencies you see here in the midpoint we have Orcus in conjunction with Nessus hmm? very close to the ascendant let's move on to the next chart this is now Mercury's station on October 18 for Phoenix again hmm. Jupiter at the fourth house cusp okay let's see what comes out of that hmm. so yeah I said it and I still stand strong on that you won't see major shifts before Mercury will turn direct this was a very necessary time of for everyone and everything else to be in a mode of retrospection of introspection of really getting to feel the the pain and all the all the convulsions and, and deceptions and and as you said yeah you, you can't just tell people we have to make them feel it experience it go through it that's the only way we have to existentially be touched by it before you are ready to get out of your dream to wake up awakening to a greater reality and awakening is not fun at first we have to be very compassionate with all the people who are just about waking up as well as with the ones who are not yet there and still giving them a chance being nice being understanding these dark forces had such an enormous have an enormous refinement in their methods and they have been refining them 
not just for the last few decades but for centuries on end they it's it's really a mystery that we are at the, that point a miracle i in me mean to say a miracle that we are at this point where we are as a collective and many individuals naturally who started that starting to see behind the screen starting to say behind that curtain that exposing that old fellow who is pulling the levers and making that big um, monster to show itself but it's truly not um, that powerful that's all which is now starting to be unmasked hmm? Mars exactly opposing the part of fortune and then Mars getting into the opposition with Aries over the next four or five days here after the 18th and um, okay let's go to the midpoint chart here again of that moment Mercury direct station with the nation's chart as calculated for mm -hmm. Phoenix and once again that 11th 12th degree of Sagittarius now the descendant with Chiron here the moon nine degrees Virgo and uh, you remember where we were just at the nine degree mark Virgo and Pisces let me just uh, zoom back to it here just telling you once more nine degrees Pisces Virgo mm. it's the Orcus Nessus opposition activating this again from another angle scene Pluto here at the ascendant hmm. and again the 22nd degree of Leo hmm. how about that uh, did I exaggerate with all the amazing synchronicities which I would show you and I mean I'm really just showing you the most outstanding charts I have looked at many more uh, it's kind of my passion I like to do research naturally as you can see okay <laughs> Arakot Ishion here at the base of this chart this says that this is the place where truth is revealed hmm? simple way said Arokot is the one who sees the bigger picture who is able to see the whole sky standing under the whole sky taking it in, taking it all in realizing the grand picture Ishion is a very very smart energy understanding how to get into the nooks and corners of every subject how to really go to the the edges of the possibilities again keep in mind transit Jupiter is at this degree all the time all these charts are interlocking with one another another one here I could say more about and this is in a perfect sextile here with the moon Jupiter Ceres it's really a rebirth of sort a recreation something promising Okay, now we are at the heliocentric Saturn Uranus. 
square as for Phoenix that's now on the 19th and now Saturn and Varuna are here in the consciousness in the power axis in the plumb line so Saturn is putting its foot down we are ready to shift gears here Saturn is the one who is executing that plan getting it into action and again again <laughs> part of fortune exactly opposing Mars hmm? how about that if you just zoom back to this chart you see we had that exact same position now the part of fortune is a mirror point between ascendant sun and moon so in this chart it would be the mirror point of ascendant moon and then you're mirroring the sun over that position and you're getting to the part of fortune same here ascendant moon and you're mirroring the sun's position over and you're getting to this point so happens that it's both the 22nd degree of Aries well I keep it at that <laughs> we're already here it's getting a long uh, um, presentation here sorry about that you can take breaks and um, let it sink in and go back to it if you like I just wanted to put it out because to me it's now very very clear that some big announcements will be made in Phoenix anywhere between the 19th and the 23rd of October hmm? that's the big window there hmm? when they, they still have that preeminent Libra energy of like curing like hmm? as I said in the beginning so this is now the midpoint of that moment when Saturn and Uranus have their ex will have their exact square as for Phoenix and um, the nation's chart again that midpoint and you see what we see here what I just talked about that joy of creating something new hmm? okay let's get started we have been waiting for too long let's get real hmm? it's so exciting because we are that close to 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 the breakthrough hmm? that's really what it feels that's why things have been pushed into the red zone of craziness yeah that, that they're doing whatever they still can to um, prevent things from happening but I'm very strongly sensing this has passed this moment and astrology really is the blueprint of proof see that Uranus Sun square yes these are revolutionary times by the way <laughs> I didn't even say that yet and I guess I really should add that and I will uh, say that as we move on to the last chart here which is the Sun changing into a new hexagram into the new six day phase let's just zoom back here quickly into this one so you understand what I'm talking about this is then here when the Sun will be at 26 degrees 22 minutes and 30 seconds Libra hexagram 50 the cauldron 
that's the time when the meal will be served <laughs> okay I guess you get it and um, as the Sun and Earth are in opposition to one another that's where Earth will be at this point 26 22 30 and Aries and that is hexagram 3 which is difficulties at the beginning now I want to read you what these two hexagrams say because this seems to be the window the six day phase where the ice really is broken open and you see why Mars is rising here in Phoenix <laughs> You remember that was when in the last two charts the part of fortune was here. Hmm. This time the part of fortune is here. Conjunct Chiron. How neat and opposing Mercury. Yes, it is the breaking open of the wound and releasing the truth in a way it cannot be questioned and doubted anymore. The moon at 14 degrees Aries is opposing the nations Saturn fasten your seatbelts will get a little rough hmm? okay get that so okay yeah there's always too many things I want to share but I want to share with you these two hexagrams here quickly that is hexagram three difficulty at the beginning that's how it will feel down on earth the situation points to teeming chaotic profusion profusion thunder and rain fill the air in an allegorical way said but the chaos clears up while the abysmal sinks that is the upper um, the upper three gram is the abysmal the water goes down the upward movement eventually passes beyond the danger and the thunder here below that is the upward moving energy so the two mo energies move towards each other this is a strong interaction of the most basic forces of nature it is actually as it is hexagram three hexagram one is the pure creative force with the six yang lines hexagram two is the six yin lines earth when earth and sky interact for the first time that's what is difficulty at the beginning representing as so this means at first it's difficult but it's also moving very fast just I um, want to show you one more thing because I cannot help <laughs> that is in the template that's where hexagram 3 is and this is called the channel of mutation whenever things get activated in this central channel here between the root and the sacral then things can move extremely fast and shift in a heartbeat hmm? so that's where we are going okay and then I promised you okay uh, well I first have to see uh, share what I see <laughs> see what I share <laughs> yes that's correct too Pluto at the fourth house gasp again how about that for Phoenix that moment when the Sun is at that exact degree initiating the six-day window so let me see what was it what I wanted to share with you right it was about the 22nd degree of Aquarius so yeah this is a a nice way to end this session because this is hexagram 49 revolution <laughs> revolution where Jupiter is in 
So you here and the grid once more. I guess this is the one. Yep. Okay. So here we have hexagram 49. And 49 is revolution. And let me just pull that up here from this side, which I really like. These are the original translations by Richard Wilhelm, who was the first to translate the I Ching. He was a scholar and lived in China in the 19th century. He was the first one to bring all that wisdom to the West. Hexagram 49, revolution. The Chinese hexagram, the Chinese character for this hexagram means in its original sense, an animal's pelt, which is changed in the course of the year by molting. Yes, that's what it really is. It's a shedding, a new season is coming. We have to adjust to this new season. From this word is carried over to apply to the moldings in political life, the great revolutions connected with changes of governments. How about that? Hmm? Changes of governments. The two three grams making up the hexagram are the same two that appear in Quay opposition, which is actually the American nation's earth sign hmm? that's in Capricorn opposing the sun. That means it's 13 degrees Capricorn. That's where opposition is just an interesting coincidence there. The two youngest daughters, Li and Tui, Li is fire and Tui is lake. So here the fire is within the lake hmm? in revolution. Anyway, I want it uh, a stop here and um, thank you if you're still listening. Thank you for um, getting to the end. The end. <laughs> well, thanks again. Um, I'm having a lot of fun doing these videos. I like sharing what I know and I hope I can really kind of kindle some fires here. I know it's a lot and um, there's lot, lots to learn. But that's the kind of education I would like to help implement in the new system after the changes to help young people understand and realize the enormous gifts we have by learning these systems and implementing them. That's where I'm going. Just giving you this little insight. Thanks again. Wonderful having you here. And again, give it a like or subscribe. Hmm? Thank you.